that Liverpool had no answers. They were not able to play out of the back at all. Liverpool were flying heading into this. They hadn't lost. They lost one time all season to Tottenham. And they just looked like they had run out of answers. Yeah. And guys like Diogo Jota and Luis Diaz just they had been so, so good and in such good form. They hardly touched the ball. They were hardly mm -hmm. factors in this one. There was no, there was no deep threat from no, Liverpool. No, so not at all. When you have Mohamed Salah on a wing, you have Shobaslai coming through the, the middle, you have people who are aggressive, who are going to stretch the back line. Arsenal just sat in a cube in the midfield, mm -hmm. sat, sat at the halfway line and said, come, come in. Yeah. And you, we're not going to allow you to play centrally. You're not going to open us up. And then you saw Trent Alexander-Arnold keep pushing the touchline, and every time Arsenal got it, it was into the channel, right into that channel <sighs> that's vacated because Trent plays a little bit higher, then Konate has to go and cover. And the first goal happens because Konate, Konate. has to cheat because he thinks they're going to go over and opens up that, that whole midfield so Havertz can run in. And obviously Havertz is not the best I ideal choice at the nine for Arsenal. St and it still worked. But when I saw him starting in the team sheet and no mm -hmm. Gabby Jesus, I said, here we go. And Jorginho in the midfield. And, and Jorginho was player of the Phenomenal. match. Uh, you, the relief. You, yesterday, I, yesterday, Friday, I go back to what you said when someone asked you, what if, if Arsenal doesn't lose this game and you were in, in, the, in your typical Charlie fashion, it's over. It's <laughs> over. Like, there's no chance. <laughs> and the relief and the outpour of emotion after the game was because Arsenal aren't out of the title race. They needed to win that game. And all the, the effusiveness and the celebrations afterwards were all because of that and how important that game was to the Arsenal fans and to the team as well. Miguel Arteta in his post-game press conference said, how much of a connection he felt with the fans again. He was he was encouraging the crowd to get more involved throughout did you like that? throughout the game. I don't <laughs> mind it. No, I don't mind it. I took I took issue with what he did after the match. Um, he basically was doing the imitating the Jurgen Klopp celebration and fist pumping. And I thought that was incredibly disrespectful because I'm looking at Mikel Arteta and I'm thinking, sir, you haven't won anything yet. Uh, Jurgen Klopp has won every trophy under the sun. He just announced that he is leaving the club at the end of the season. I thought it was a little disrespectful. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have an issue with them celebrating. It was a massive win for the club. But doing that, like, come on, guy. I, I don't know. Look, they're, they're home, right? You just want a massive match. You didn't want to go eight points down, right? Because I think at that point it is over for Arsenal, mm -hmm. right? And given what they went through last year, um, I can see the emotion in this game. I'm with Charlie here. When I saw Kai Havertz, I'm like, this is Liverpool's day. Yeah. And then how they opened up that defense. And it was all Martinelli for me because Trent Alexander, as you mentioned, goes forward. They kept pumping balls in the channel. Uh, but as far as the celebration, I, it, there was some, some emotion in that stadium. There really was. Mm. I mean, it was incredible. Amazing how many mistakes Liverpool made. Yeah. I from mean, when from you, veterans, from guys who yeah, don't make mistakes. Yeah, Tony. I mean, the, 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 you, you have Allison kicking Virgil van Dijk on Ugh. that goal. And, it, you know, oh. I mean, he hits him. And I mean, Martinelli doesn't have an easier goal, but probably deserved the goal on the day. And uh, I'm looking at this Liverpool side. I mean, it was a performance that you didn't expect at this time no. of, of the season for a way that they've been. They've they got this energy now, right, with Jurgen Klopp leaving. I think it's going to help them throughout the year. But credit to Liverpool. And by the way, Trossard for me, and I know there's a little deflection on this one. This guy does something, Charlie, every time he comes on the field. He does. He, he's, a, he's a special player in terms of what you'd want from a role player. He, I don't think he's an out-and-out -out striker for a team that's going to win the Premier League or an out-and-out -out starter. But when you talk about a player who can come in and make a difference, yeah. that's the type of player you need. And I was curious, from, from your point of view, you look at Ellison and Raya, and they both have kind of mistakes, if you'd say, or you could blame it on the defender. What would be the right, I guess, way to move forward as a goalkeeper in those instances? Because it feels like the defender in both cases trying to shield for the keeper, one's in the six versus at the top of the box. Yeah, you have, you have to forget. I mean, that you have to have short-term memory as a goalkeeper, right? you got to forget about it because how many times have we seen this happen? I mean, you're talking about Virgil van Dijk, right, Nico, who's one, no, of, one of the rarely. premier you know, center backs in all of world football in this generation, right? Allison, who I respect, is one of the top five goalkeepers in the world. You can, you can look at it, analyze it, who should have done this, who should have done that, or you go, you know what, this isn't really an epidemic in our team, these two guys making mistakes at the same time, and you move on. But uh, really, 
really odd to see from Liverpool at this time of the season, the way they've been playing. The That mistake between Virgil van Dijk and Allison, which I feel like is more to blame on the center back for not clearing the ball originally, he lets it bounce and, and, and wants to shield. And then there's a little nudge from Martinelli mm. where yeah. Allison can't clear. Mind you, Allison that- has a rash moment every so often. I think this is all keeper. He, he ha- but hold up. He doesn't but- need to come out. He, you have Van Dyke. No, but Van Dyke is shielding for because for Allison's Allison. off his line. You got to take care of that the moment. You can't let it bounce. You you can't let it bounce and turn your back. Yeah. The ball the ball was already over the top. But he could have he let because he permitted it. But Van Dyke was there. He's he he's got the the strength and the pace. I don't Martinelli's know. Martinelli's not getting by him. The, the moment the moment the ball bounces, it does seem like Virgil Van Dyke, and he's he's he doesn't even look at Martinelli. He sees the ball bounce, and he's shielding, just looking at Allison. Okay, he's coming for it. And in between that long time that he was waiting to shield the player off, Martinelli gives a little, a little shove that pushes Virgil van Dijk forward, and it doesn't permit Allison to make contact with the ball. He makes contact with, with Virgil van Dijk instead. Nonetheless, that was a microcosm of the greater yeah. game, the 90 minutes that Liverpool, yeah, Liverpool played that were dull. They, they didn't, were, and, feel, and, and, they and they didn't seem like up for it, which was strange. Because no. this was arguably the biggest match of, of the season uh, and a chance for them to, to really put themselves in a, a good position in the title race. And so I thought I expected more energy, a, a more sense of urgency than I saw from them. And it was... You know, a bad day at the office. It was just a terrible time to have a, a bad day at the office and for Liverpool. But I feel like Arsenal should have put Liverpool away in the first half, given their chances. Oh gosh! Because against a, a, a real Liverpool side yeah. that's playing at their best, Liverpool, were Liverpool awful. wins this game. Yeah. Because Arsenal should have capitalized on those opportunities in the first half, and that's been their issue. Kai Havertz is starting. Should Kai Havertz be starting at, at, at the <laughs> nine for a Premier League champion? No. That, that's evident, but they got the job done because I think Liverpool weren't at their best. No, nope, they sure were not. And uh, Arsenal now in second place in the table on 49 points. City right there mm-hmm. as well. They play today. They've got two games in hand. It's going to, I mean, it's it's just going to get wild and interesting, as it always yeah, does. Four more match days until Liverpool plays City. It's March 9th, I think. Yeah. I don't know. Whew. It, it's crazy the standard that City sets mm-hmm. where you can't mess up. You, you can't, can't have an off day. I know. If you, and if you have an off day as a title contender, that means that City's going to win the, 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 the Premier League title, which is <sighs> I've never crazy. Been, I've never 